Hi, uh, my name is Victoria Yampolsky and I run the Startup Station. In this video, I'd like to talk about an ICO, which stands for an initial coin offering, and specifically about the positives and negatives of purchasing a cryptocurrency or a digital currency of a company that just coming on the market. There's been a lot of hype uh, in a space driven by the rise and fall of Bitcoin, but I still think people misunderstand all the risks that are involved in investing into uh, a company in the form of a token. So first, let's talk about the pluses. On the plus side, for a founder, you can raise more money and much faster, which is a great thing because it will allow you to um, start implementing your project on a much faster timeline. Uh, you also have access to a global investor base and a wider investor base because there are no restrictions on who can invest. So these are all great things. For an investor, your investment becomes liquid immediately after a token is listed on an exchange, which again is good news because typically investors have to wait three to five years before a company makes an exit. But now the time has come to talk about the negatives. Okay, so number one, I don't think that it's a good thing that founders of very early stage startups can raise so much money up front. What it does is it misaligns their incentives with the incentives of the investors. What happens in a traditional world is that a startup has to go through several rounds of financing where each round stands for a milestone that they must achieve. And them being able to achieve a milestone serves as proof that they can execute, that there is a product market fit for their product, that they can manage their team, etc. When you give all the money they will ever need uh, to a company up front, you uh, remove any incentive for them to really try. And you also encourage overspending. And so I think this is a huge problem that uh, ICOs are able to raise so much money at a very early stage. Now, the second problem is that their business plans, which are called white papers, are not thought through. Usually when you raise money, you have to put together an investor deck and a financial model, and you have to do a lot of research. But white papers, this is just like the wild, wild west. You can do whatever you want. Suddenly, there are no rules. However, to run a business, you still need to know all of this information. And if you don't have it, what this means is that you are unprepared. It doesn't mean that you don't need it. You still need it. It's just that when you're going to get all of this money, you're not going to know what to do. The third risk is that there is a lack of transparency and oversight for investors. And it is a great thing that now we can fund projects on the other side of the world, in China, in Argentina, in Australia. But it also means that they're very far away and we can't really know what's going on there. And if in case things go wrong, we're not going to be able to do anything. Now, my hope is as at this industry matures and the laws become more comprehensive, this problem will go away. But for now, this is a huge issue. And finally, of course, because of all of the things that I've described, there is a lot of fraud in the space and there are additional risks, such as a cybersecurity risk. So while I think it's possible to find great investments in an ICO space, I think that people need to be careful because these investments are riskier than traditional angel investments and not the other way around. And just because they're liquid does not mean that they're less risky. Thank you for watching. And for more information, please go to www.thesetupstation.com. 
and look at the token valuation product where we can help you value your token and better prepare you to be a successful company. Thank you and bye-bye.